So let's um, talk about harmonic functions. So, so far we haven't really talked about the real and imaginary parts of uh, holomorphic functions. And it's actually kind of interesting that this is, uh, uh, this is another connection to uh, applied mathematics because the real and imaginary parts of homeric functions are so-called harmonic functions and these are precise set of functions that for example come up in their solutions to the Laplace equation so they're on the steady state heat distribution or or maybe the potential for uh, electric charge so it's it's interesting that there's this uh, connection to uh, uh, on one side applied mathematics, uh, PD, and uh, complex analysis. Um, all right, so let's uh, define what we mean by a harmonic function. It's a solution to the Laplace equation. So we have, um, have an open set, uh, U, as usual. Uh, now, uh, here we're going to assume that a function uh, f is twice continuously differentiable. Uh, is this in the real sense? Um, so it just has uh, real derivatives uh, in, in, in x and y, right? And it's, it's a real valued function, right? It, uh, um, uh, its values are the real numbers. I will say that this is harmonic if it satisfies uh, the Laplace equation. So if the second x derivative of f plus the second y derivative of f is zero, right? Is the, um, the uh, trace of the Hessian matrix, for example. So the here we wrote this operator as uh, nabla squared. Um, Sometimes it's also written as uh, delta, and um, it's it's called Laplacian. We don't write it as delta because um, uh, we use delta for something else. So uh, that's why I'm using uh, the, the the nabla squared. I sort of like that <laughs> better anyway. It sort of tells you that it's a second order operator. Um, so it's convenient. To write down this operator using diverting the operators using the you know these um, derivatives so-called uh, in terms of z and z bar right if I take f if I take its z derivative and then its z bar derivative and take four times that the four is not really relevant it's just uh, to get the scaling right but it's really this this operator right the derivative the z derivative and then the z, uh, z bar derivative of, of f well you just um, uh, write down uh, what this is uh, sort of uh, a, a standard uh, factorization i just noticed there is a <laughs> small typo there should be a two over here right uh, but uh, so this is a uh, uh, um, so the same factorization that you've seen in uh, in, in high school algebra, right? X plus y times x minus y, right? And so we get uh, we get the Laplace operator uh, of f is uh, so if uh, you know, it's one of the interesting things over here is that uh, that that I sort of find interesting is that this is the uh, there's this sort of connection to um, to uh, uh, sort of basic PD theory. Um, if you look at the wave equation, the the solution. If you think back to your your basic uh, 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 PD undergraduate PD class, and you know, solution of the wave equation in one variable in the Dunning-Bear uh, solution. What's interesting is that uh, you uh, uh, you change variables um, in, in, in that setting uh, to 
rewrite the, 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 the wave operator, which has a minus sign instead of a plus sign like the, uh, like the, the, uh, the Laplacian. Uh, you rewrite it, but it doesn't have these eyes, right? Uh, it, do, it they are actual. Oh, sorry, uh, they are actual uh, real uh, uh, real operators, right? And so you can you do that to integrate uh, and, and and find a solution. And in the same way, uh, we find a solution here, right? So in the for uh, for the wave equation, you find that uh, the solution of the wave equation on the real line uh, is uh, two waves moving in the opposite direction. Well, here it's it's going to be similar, except it's going to be a holomorphic and an anti-holomorphic um, uh, function, because here these derivatives uh, end up being the Wirtinger operators rather than uh, just uh, you know actual directional derivatives. So kind of the, the formally it's the same thing, but it ends up being a very different um, uh, uh, different beast altogether. Right? The solutions are completely different and they behave completely differently. All right. Now, one of the things to notice here is that uh, f is a harmonic function if and only if the z derivative of f is holomorphic, right? If it's harmonic, then then uh, then it's uh, well the, the z derivative uh, uh, is, is 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 the first part of this, right? And saying you know, if if you take the z bar derivative uh, and set you know and, and that is zero, uh, if it's you know, the harmonic, then that's that's clearly means that the z derivative of f is um, holomorphic and vice versa. If it's if it's holomorphic, then the z bar derivative is zero, and therefore the Laplacian is uh, of f is zero, right? So that's actually quite useful uh, to to solve because we can we can now try to um, integrate, right? Basically, we're trying to you know uh, to figure this out. We sort of integrate. Uh, we almost think of integrating twice, integrating in z-bar and integrating in z. So, well, locally, uh, this this won't work globally. It's just just near a point. Um, we have uh, we can write down um, the. You know, it, it's it's uh, we know that the z derivative of f is uh, um, holomorphic, right? So it has locally an antiderivative. Right, so you can write that enter as 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 as, uh, as g, right, and so f should uh, should be uh, 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 g plus something that is killed by the z derivative, right? Um, so basically, it's it's uh, and and this c will also have to be c two because f was c two, g is holomorphic. So f minus g is also c2, and, and we have um, the z derivative had better be 0, right? Uh, because the z derivative uh, of g is, is, is f, right? So let h be the conjugate of this, uh, of this c, right? Uh, then if we look at the z bar derivative, so we're looking at the Cauchy Riemann equations of H, it's the same thing as the Cauchy Riemann equation of C bar, right? That's just by definition. Um, but if you if you look at what that means, um, and this was an exercise to show that, that it's really uh, the same as, as taking the 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 bar, the, the complex conjugate of the z derivative of C, and we know that that is zero. And the complex conjugate of zero is zero, right? So that means that H is holomorphic. So we have we wrote the, uh, f as uh, a holomorphic function plus a conjugate of a holomorphic function, uh, so the anti-holomorphic function, which you've seen in exercises uh, uh, before. 
And uh, we actually know that f is real valued by, uh, by definition. So uh, if we just write f as the real part of s, because it's real valued, so it's equal to its real part, uh, <coughs> then, well, this is just, uh, uh, this is just how you write the, 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 uh, the real part. And uh, now if, if we reorder in a trivial way the, 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 the top, we get uh, that, um, oh, I forgot to uh, write down what phi, uh, phi was. Phi is uh, uh, g plus h, sorry. I didn't write that down. So you can, uh, if, you, if you let uh, phi be g plus h, then uh, we get that uh, f is the real part of phi. And we can do a similar thing for the imaginary part just by sticking an i there, right? So let's not worry um, about it. But basically what we, we have done is uh, that if we have a real value harmonic function, then it's the real part of a holomorphic function, at least locally. Uh, this all is just all local because why is it local? Because we had to find an antiderivative. We cannot globally in any domain find an antiderivative. We can find one in a simply connected domain or, you know, if, if we take a neighborhood, we can always take a simply connected neighborhood like a disk, right? So we can do it locally near every point we can find, um, um, basically, if, if we can find a g and an h, we can find a phi, right? It's the, uh, you know, this is the real, uh, the, this is the uh, holomorphic function whose real part is f. Okay, but it's, again, only local. Now, conversely, suppose that uh, we have uh, f written as uh, the real part of a uh, holomorphic function. Notice that, uh, well, you know, one of these uh, we already had, this one, um, and it doesn't really matter uh, which order I write these uh, these guys in, uh, these, these, uh, the, the, the working operators uh, uh, commute uh, just like normal second order uh, uh, derivatives. You can double check that. Uh, and uh, oh, well, when we're applying it to C2 functions, but that's, that's what we're doing, right? Twice continuously differentiable functions. Um, so if we apply the Laplacian to F, right? we write the Laplacian as we did before, right? Uh, but now we, uh, um, we apply it uh, in a uh, in sort of uh, uh, the opposite direction to uh, phi bar, right? So you apply in the standard direction to phi and opposite direction in phi bar. Why? Because over here, what we're doing is we're differentiating first with z bar, but phi is holomorphic, so that's zero, right? And over here, we're differentiating first with respect to z, but phi bar is anti-holomorphic, right? So this is the, the, the z derivative is zero. So we get zero. Um, so what did we prove? Um, we proved an if and only if, really, right? Uh, so if we have um, any open set and a function f, real valued, then f is harmonic if and only if near every point, so for every p, uh, there is a neighborhood v, um, and a holomorphic function in V, uh, such that uh, F is the real part of phi on V, right? So first, it is locally the real part of a holomorphic function, and second, it's if it is uh, the real part of a holomorphic function, then it is harmonic, right? So it's completely, uh, it tells you uh, what are holomorphic functions. Now, once we know this, uh, we have we have more because we know how you know uh, harmonic functions are really nice. They're infinitely differentiable. They're uh, they're uh, real analytic. That they're you, you can write um, uh, a power series. 
And in fact, uh, if we just write down the power series for that phi, um, well, actually, we, we write it for, uh, for one half of phi, but uh, it doesn't really matter. We can always write down um, a power series uh, for, for a harmonic function in this, um, uh, in this way, right? Um, where we write, uh, it's, it's basically the, you know, uh, uh, phi and phi bar, or, or one half of phi and phi bar, right? Um, and this converges uh, uniformly, absolutely, on any closed disk uh, around, uh, around this point, right? That, that fits in you. So it has, again, very similar um, uh, to, um, to what uh, 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 to how uh, 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 how this works for holomorphic functions, right? Now, the key point is uh, that um, we have uh, uh, a harmonic uh, f, uh, then. Uh, it, it was to find, you know, to, to, to find these holomorphic functions. We'll define the primitive uh, of the the z derivative. So let's uh, state that as a separate proposition, just to have a, um, a sort of more precise statement of it. Uh, I think we said this before already. If we have a simply connected domain, and uh, f is a harmonic function. Then uh, there exists a holomorphic function. Uh, phi such that uh, on u such that f is the real part of phi. So for a simply connected domain, uh, we can always do this globally, right? Now, what we'll say uh, for any open set, if we have a harmonic function f, and uh, there is a there is another harmonic function g such that s plus i g is holomorphic then we'll say that the g is the harmonic conjugate of f, right? It's, it's a function that makes uh, uh, f, uh, uh, well, uh, that sort of uh, complements f and, and makes a holomorphic function, um, you know, with that, um, uh, with that real part. Now, not every harmonic function has a harmonic conjugate um, every function has a harmonic conjugate locally. We've just proved it, but uh, not in in uh, any domain, right? So, in a simply connected domain, yeah, and every um, harmonic function has a harmonic conjugate. But uh, on, for example, the puncture plane, if I take a log of mod z, uh, that's a harmonic function, but it. Uh, does not have a harmonic conjugate in in the punctured plane in here, right? If I took uh, some simply connected uh, subset, uh, I would have. Um, so, for example, if I took the slit plane, then this would have a harmonic conjugate because it would be simply connected. Uh, now, if log mod z was, uh, had a harmonic conjugate. Well, log mod z is precisely the real part of any uh, branch of the log. And uh, this would really mean that, that we would have a branch of the log in, uh, in the punctured plane if you actually could find a harmonic conjugate. Uh, it's, you know, one way to, 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 to think about it is uh, uh, to, to make it uh, precise. Um, if I have um, any domain and uh, um, a harmonic function, and if I have two harmonic conjugates, uh, then uh, then they can uh, uh, at most differ by a constant, um, right? So um, so this this is you know you can make this uh, true locally, right? So basically, any other harmonic conjugate of log mod z would have to be some constant, uh, uh, you know, well, uh, the argument uh, times, uh, oh, sorry, argument uh, of z plus a constant. And uh, there is no way to make that continuous uh, in the entire uh, uh, punctured plane. Now, the, the proof is, 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 is totally trivial. Uh, if I 
uh, just uh, uh, subtract uh, the the two uh, these two holomorphic functions f plus i g one and f plus i g two. Um, well, that that had better be holomorphic, right? I can divide by i, right? If I want to. Um, now, if I divide by i, I just get the g one minus g two. That is now holomorphic, and it's also real valued, and therefore it's constant, right? Because any holomorphic function that's real valued is constant, and we're on a connected set U as a domain. All right. Now, <coughs> so you see that the real and imaginary parts of holomorphic functions are harmonic, and actually, harmonic functions are the real and imaginary parts of holomorphic functions, at least locally. Uh, but the modulus is not. Uh, but it's not a totally a problem because the log of the modulus of f is harmonic. Well, at least where f is non-zero. Um, uh, where f is zero, uh, well, things are bad. Uh, the log uh, goes to minus infinity, right? Uh, so this is definitely not um, a harmonic function there. It's, uh, not even real value, right? Uh, we would have to maybe define it to be minus infinity if, we, if we'd wanted to. Uh, but uh, it's uh, um, uh, that is a harmonic function. That's that's fairly easy to prove. Uh, I'll leave it as an, an as an exercise. Um, uh, it's uh, yeah. I'll I won't uh, ruin the uh, uh, ruin the exercise because. It's 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 a bit too too easy. And there's a couple of ways of doing it. Um, there's a hard way and there's an easier way actually. <laughs> uh, well, not a hard way, but a more tedious way and a and a totally trivial way. Um, so that's uh, that's it for this lecture. So we'll we'll, we'll talk more about uh, uh, harmonic functions um, uh, next time. <laughs>